Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Congresswoman. Today, I have a simple message for all those workers, including many union members, who sincerely believed that Donald Trump understood their economic anxieties and was going to fight for them. They should feel betrayed. We all should feel betrayed by Donald Trump's so-called tax reform plan and its versions in the House and the Senate. The facts are the facts. This is not a middle class tax plan. This is not a tax reform plan. This is a redistribution of income from hard-working women and men to the wealthy. That is not what we were promised. This is a callous and indifferent betrayal of America's working people, and this is unacceptable. We need tax reform which benefits working families and middle class families. We do not need more giveaways to corporations and billionaires. These Republican plans would give massive tax cuts to the wealthy on the backs of the working class, poor, and those who can least afford them. The people responsible for wasting trillions of dollars on tax giveaways to the rich, and who are now proposing in the budget for the coming year trillions of dollars of cuts to Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, education, and infrastructure. They are wrong. These Republican tax plans eliminate or reduce taxes to benefit the wealthy. The estate tax, the alternative minimum tax. They reduce the top individual tax rate. They reduce the corporate tax rate while at the same time making working people pay more by eliminating the tax deduction for state and local taxes. Shame, shame, shame. Shame is right by increasing the bottom tax bracket for those least able to afford it and shame on them for that too. Working parents would no longer be able to exclude child care expenses from their income. Medical expenses, which are crippling working people, will no longer be able to get tax breaks in a market where health care costs are already high and Obamacare is under attack. Working families, working people, no matter who you may have voted for in the past, must oppose this tax plan. There is no alternative. We all must oppose them. Thank you.
I work for a telecommunication company and my husband drives a bus for the MTA. I love our life and our family, but we live close to the margin. If this tax plan passes, our lives will get more difficult. Under the current proposal, our taxes go up by $2,500. That might not seem like a lot to some people, but it's a big deal to us. In our budget, every little bit counts. Let me tell you a little bit about what this tax increase will mean to our family. For us, $2,500 is a tire mortgage payment. The entire month's payment, we would have to find a way somewhere else. At least $200 a month going. And that $200 loss would hit us hard. Every year I save a little each month for Christmas Club. If this tax plan succeeds, our Christmas Club could disappear. Our kids will likely have to come back on after school activities like sports that helps keep us happy, help keep them happy and healthy because we won't be able to afford them any longer. And our family nights, which we budget carefully, so for once or twice a month, would disappear. This isn't fair. Big corporations who don't pay their fair share will get a trillion dollar tax cut, while families like mine will pay more. Republicans in Washington are paying for these tax plans on families, on the backs of families like mine. The tax policy might seem like a boring issue. It used to be like that to me. Now I'm going to look at newspaper articles on tax, tax policy. I see the Christmas gifts my children won't receive. I wonder where I will live if I can't afford my mortgage payment. The basketball games my daughter will not be able to play in. The student loan debt that will be even harder for my son to repay. Today isn't just about the tax policy. It's about hardworking families like me and my husband. We are going to fight. And I know the man that I'm going to introduce is going to fight with us. I am honored to introduce Bayer de Blasio.
a lot of what does work in the American economy and can set back tens of millions of Americans. So the funny part of this is when you listen to the president, you listen to Republican leadership, they actually think people are going to fall from the notion that the plan was meant to help working people. It's simply a giveaway to the wealthy and the big corporations. It's clear as a bell. And I've got to tell you, it's particularly insulting in New York City that New York City would be one of the places that would get hurt the most. This plan takes dead aim at New York City. The place the president comes from is one of the places to get hurt the most. 700,000 plus New Yorkers would experience double taxation. They lose their state and local tax deductibility. They'd be hit with higher taxes than ever. That's why you even see a number of the Republican House members standing up and saying this is not fair. 700,000 New Yorkers would be taxed more. And most of those folks make less than $75,000 a year. They're working class and middle class people. Exactly. <laughs> and you heard Alicia, $2,500 in her case, she'd have to pay more in taxes. Some families have to pay up to $5,000 more in taxes. So what's really going on in this tax plan is the equivalent of asking New Yorkers and Americans to take money out of their pocket and hand it over to millionaires and billionaires and big corporations. That's what's really happening here. And look at all the people in the Trump administration who wrote the plan and are promoting the plan. They happen to be millionaires and billionaires. It's not even hard to trace 1.5 trillion dollars we would lose from the things that we need. And that money going to those who are already doing so well. By the way, I, I kind of have to admire the honesty of some folks in the White House. One of the President's economic advisors the other day said, you know, there's one group of people that absolutely love this plan. It's the CEOs of America. <laughs> Couldn't have been blunter about it. So, Questions can be stopped. You're going to hear from the folks who have the, the best vantage point or at the front line fighting the fight. But I just want to say one thing about can it be stopped. You remember we were told so many times the Affordable Care Act was dead and gone after the election. Remember that? Yeah. Remember all the times they told us it was impossible to save it? Right. Yes. But we all saved it, didn't we? Right. Yeah.
it is an outright assault on working families here in New York City and around the nation. And it does all of this to finance $1.5 trillion, yes, with a T, trillion dollars. Make no mistake, the Republican budget that they passed was to make sure that it was designed to enable this giveaway to the wealthiest 1% in this country. So we are not going to let Republicans in Congress to ransack Medicare and Medicaid. Democrats, 
We know they're on our side. Every Democrat in the House, to their everlasting credit, voted no in the budget bill. And I'm confident that they're going to But right here in New York and New Jersey determines whether this bill passes or it fails. Because the nine Republican congressmen from New York and the six Republican congressmen from New Jersey have our state's fate in their hands. We want to, because if state and local is in this bill, it's a dagger to the heart of New York, it's a dagger to the heart of New Jersey. And then, those 15 have to choose their states over the rich special interests who are trying to push them around. I want to give Peter King a shout out. He's been strong and resolute. I want to give Dan Donovan a shout out. He's been strong and resolute. I want to give even Lee Zeldin a shout out. He too is from my ministry book. As has Leonard Lance in New Jersey. But I am going to call out the names of the others. And you TV stations, please send it to your upstate affiliates. Please do. Where is Congressman Faso? Where is, Congress, where is Congresswoman Stephanie? Where is Congresswoman Tenney? Where is Congressman Kachko? Where is Congressman Collins? Where is Congressman Reed? And the New Jersey ones, all of whose names are there. Where? tried to come up with a compromise. The compromise says you can deduct some, not all of your property taxes, but still none of your income tax, none of your sales tax. That still takes away three quarters of this deduction from Americans, middle class, working class Americans. You know what they're saying with this compromise? We're doing you a favor. No deal. No deal. We're not going to... They say we're, they're doing us a favor. They say instead of chopping off five of your fingers, we're going to chop off four. Isn't that nice of us? Well, no, it isn't. And so this compromise won't work. And besides, they're being set up because the Senate bill doesn't have any compromise. And they're going to send it back with no compromise. And those people will have hated and abetted real, real economic hardship for their states, for middle class and working class people in their states. So this is very important. It hurts our city. It hurts our state. Now back in 1986, Democrats actually tried to do the same thing. Congressman Gephardt and Senator Bradley in their bill said get rid of state and leave local deductibility. The New Jersey and New York delegations, Democrats and Republicans together, said no, and they had to take it out. We want that to happen here. And happen here. So we are going to make this fight. Taking it out won't make a good bill, a bad bill, good, but it'll make it slightly less bad. And by the way, if they have to take it out, I think the whole bill will be bad. So we are here to say no compromise. No taking away our state and local deductibility. No bill that hurts the middle class, hurts the poor, and gives almost every penny of its health to the wealthy and the powerful corporations. We will win this fight. Yes, 
get, we want you to stay healthy, Chuck. <laughs> Keep going. Our senators have really led the way. And Senator Kirsten Gilbrand understands this issue, affects this entire state. She understands it would hurt upstate and downstate alike, and it would hurt, in fact, when it comes to state and local tax deductibility, 100 million Americans, middle class and working class people. And that's why she has been such a powerful leader in the fight to stop this tax plan. I honor to present Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. some from New York State, that New York City, New York State, you are screwed under this bill. Screw you. That's what this bill will do. It will hurt middle class people. It will disrupt their lives. 25% of New Yorkers will see a tax increase of $1,200 if this bill is allowed to become law. Middle class people, more than that, but we're talking about 20, 25% of the middle class alone will see this, all to afford a tax break to special interest corporations in this country and the wealthiest among us. They will eliminate the estate tax that benefits 0.002% no 
0.002% of the wealthiest in our country. They will drive our debt further into the hole by $1.5 trillion in order to give a tax break to the wealthiest in this country. They, and their tax havens as well. <laughs> I'm getting help up here today. What I, what I really want to say is that I spent four days last week on the Ways and Means Committee, which is the Tax Writing Committee. I saw my fellow New Yorkers vote for this bill. In, in, in Tom Reed. Tom Reed from the Southern GM voted for this bill, despite the fact I called them out on it. And we know that Chris Collins from Buffalo said they have to pass this bill or their donors won't give them another penny. Right. We've heard the same thing from Senator Lindsey Graham. We know that this is all about passing something, regardless of what effect it will have on working people in this country. Right. That's not the way in which our tax policy should be developed. It should be done in a fair and open process that benefits all Americans, not just the wealthiest, right. not just the chosen amongst us. It should be reflective of the values of our country, where we will, we will look out for the least amongst us. We look out for those who are struggling to make it in this great nation of ours. That's what should be doing in Washington, D.C., not looking out for the special interest, not, look, not passing a scam tax bill. This is a scam which is going on. That will hurt our seniors, will hurt our middle class, it will hurt our students, it will hurt our veterans, and it will hurt New York. That's why this bill needs to be defeated. It's now, after this week, we suspect that it probably will pass in the House of Representatives. But if we do our work, if we can get every New Yorker to vote no, if we can get every person from New Jersey to vote no, if we can get every member from California, another high uh, a, a state that has uh, local state and property taxes, we can defeat this bill. But I know one thing, I know one thing. When the Senate takes this charge, we have two champions in New York State, Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand. And we know, And the House of Representatives doesn't necessarily take place in the, in the U.S. Senate. Uh, so we're going to continue this fight. No matter what happens this week, we will continue this fight because New Yorkers are depending on us. And with that, let me introduce to you a fighter, someone who is uh, a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee as well as one of the most senior members on the Transportation Committee, a fighter for all New Yorkers, Congressman Jerry Nath. <laughs> scam is a desperate, disgraceful attempt to line the pockets of the wealthiest Americans and corporations at the expense of middle and low income families, middle class and low income families. And why? For what? We are told the corporate and upper income tax cuts will result in more investment and greater economic growth, which will yield more jobs and more revenue for the country and higher wages for the middle class. But that is bull. They've run, they've run, they have run this scam twice before. Ronald Reagan passed similar upper class tax cuts and told us they would generate such economic growth that they would pay for themselves. George Bush pulled the same scheme. What happened? Reagan's cuts sent the national debt accumulated from George Washington through Jimmy Carter at two eight hundred billion dollars. In twelve years it went from eight hundred billion to four point three trillion dollars. It quintupled. Bush's tax cuts turned the projected $5.6 trillion surplus over 10 years into a $10.5 trillion debt in eight years. They don't work. There is nothing in this bill to argue that this tax scheme will have a different impact on the economy than Reagan's or Bush's. In fact, this scam is so skewed towards the rich and corporations that it could actually be worse. The bill would eliminate the alternative minimum tax. To put that in perspective, in 2005, Donald Trump paid $38 million in taxes. Of that, $31 million was the alternative minimum tax. Republicans want to eliminate the only tax we actually know that Donald Trump has ever paid. <laughs> Republicans will repeal the estate tax, despite the fact that only the wealthiest 5,000 estates in the country pay any estate tax at all. As was said before, that's two thousandths of one percent. Wealthy Americans would also see immediate personal benefits from corporate tax cuts. 
and cuts in upper tax rates. But while billionaires and, million and corporations enjoy all these benefits, the Republican bill hands working families a ticking time bomb. The bill wipes out nearly every single deduction and credit that helps working families make ends meet. The deduction of state and local income taxes, which hundreds of thousands of middle-income New Yorkers rely on each year. The medical expense deduction, yeah. which families use to pay for everything from fertility treatments to nursing home care. Yes. The student loan interest deduction, for people who are saddled with student loan debt. Yes. The adoption tax credit, child care spending accounts, even deductions for teachers who buy school supplies for their classrooms. All to pay for tax breaks for billionaires and, and large corporations. If this bill is so blatantly harmful to working families, why are our Republican colleagues so crazy about it? Does it create jobs and give the economy a boost? No. Under this plan, the Republicans would tax companies less when they produce goods overseas than when they produce them in the United States. It is a giant incentive to large corporations to send jobs overseas. And you ever, if you ever doubted the GOP was doing this at the bidding of corporate donors, well, just the other day, Chairman Brady, Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, tweeted an excise tax multinational corporations opposed and gave those corporations an additional $100 billion in revenue. No such change was made for working families. So this bill is going to greatly increase the tax burden on middle-income families, especially in states like New York, on low-income families, and it's going to greatly increase the deficit. And what's the predictable result? A couple of years from now, the Republicans will use the $1.7 trillion deficit this scam creates to say, oh my God, look at this massive deficit. We don't want to, but we have to make savage cuts to Social Security and to Medicare and to education and infrastructure because we just can't afford it. And that's what they're deliberately building in it now. This is part of the old starve the beast scam. Deliberately create give huge tax cuts to wealthy people and corporations, deliberately create huge deficits and then say, my God, we can't afford education aid for kids. We can't afford Medicare. We can't afford uh, uh, Social Security. We can't afford health care. We can't afford education. This is a scam. It's a direct uh, attack on the middle class and on people in the United States who depend on things like Medicare, Social Security, uh, and Medicaid. We must defeat this with proper publicity and the hard work of all of our colleagues. We will defeat this. The American people. They are trying to rush this through. They are trying to rush this through so fast that people don't understand the implications before the votes are cast. We must make people understand this and hold our Republican colleagues accountable so that nobody who votes for this, nobody, can go home. Again, I, I, um, without hanging their heads in shame. So now, I have the great privilege of introducing my colleague uh, in Congress, who's been a great fighter uh, for the middle class, Congresswoman Carolyn Malone. issue and thank you Nydia who's been uh, working on this for the past week and putting it together getting us all here and our two outstanding senators for their hard work and leadership and all of my colleagues that are determined and committed to defeating this bill and uh, Joe Crowley who's on the front line on the uh, Ways and Means Committee where this bill has to get out of and he's uh, Republican tax bill passed, it will <coughs> represent the biggest heist in New York City history. It right. is terrible for New York City. It's almost like a war against New York City because it will eliminate the deductibility of state and city taxes, our local, local taxes. And this bill robs New Yorkers of billions of dollars in order to pay for giveaways to large and wealthy businesses and corporations across this country. We New Yorkers will see double taxation. 
we will pay our taxes to the federal government, the city and state, and then they'll take away the deduction so that it's like a double tax on us. And we'll see lower wages, and we'll see our tax dollars going to Washington uh, while not much is coming back. Already, we send more to Washington than any other state. We're what's called a donor state. We send over $58 billion to Washington, more money than what comes back to us, and this will absolutely probably double that amount. And we, we will see that New Yorkers alone uh, will be paying a more than $7.5 billion more in taxes every year and lose $2.6 billion per year in affordable housing finance. And then look at the deduction. It will raise the cost of housing because you can no longer deduct your mortgage payment. This is a double whammy to the heart of New York City. Let me tell you, I served in this body for 10 years as a member of the city council. I worked in Washington, or rather in Albany, for two speakers and a, the Democratic leader in the state senate. This is the most horrible economic impact on New York City that I have ever seen. It will be devastating to our economy if we are going to preserve this city as we know it. We have to stop this. We have to stop this. Now, I was confident at first, but the other times we've stopped it, we've been in charge. We've had majorities in the House. Now we're facing a Republican president, a Republican Senate, a Republican House. It may get through the House. So it is really, really, we have to kill this like we killed health care. And that was killed by the spoken up and fought it, 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 it would never have been able to stop us like we have. This, this is uh, adding insult to injury. You know, the main thing is this deductibility. This will absolutely kill our economy. But it makes higher education less affordable. It makes medical expenses no longer deductible. It will force teachers, and I'm a former teacher, we, are, we have to buy supplies because we don't have an, they don't have the supplies in the schools. Teachers will no longer be able to deduct the cost of their supplies in the classrooms. That's going to hurt education. And if that's not enough, the repeal also for the transit tax credit, which saves more than 450,000 city workers uh, uh, their commuting taxes or reduces us. This is a major tax increase on New Yorkers and middle class families across the nation. This will also explode the national debt. How can you reduce taxes and, and increase the national debt? It's so wrong. It's so unfair. Personally, I think we should be rewarded as a city because we invest in our people. We tax our people more so that we can do more to help in innovation and education. Now we will no longer be able to deduct this. This is the most serious attack on our city I have ever seen in my life, and we've had some serious ones for the economic future of our city. And it lays the groundwork uh, for Republicans to finally repeal the social programs that they never voted for in the first place. They never voted to create them. They try to repeal them every year. We stop them. But if they, you're so starved, then it's a threat to Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. We cannot let this happen. This is a fight to preserve the future of New York City. And this delegation is right, ready for it, but we need the help of everybody in New York City to flip our Republicans and make them vote for the people, not the Republican Party. member of our delegation, Gregory Meeks. He is a senior member of the Financial Services Committee. He is the ranking member of the Europe and Eurasian Committee. He is a fighter for people, the middle class, for fairness and equality. He's a great guy. Just 
House of Representatives in believing that we are the end all to be all. It is the people of this city and this state that has fueled the resistance and has been victorious in saving health care thus far. We GOP tax plan. Now, Greg Meeks already said we know the con artists. My parents are from Jamaica. We call it the Flip Flam Simfine Man. And indeed, what we see here is a willingness to let go of any moral standing, to be able to siphon from the working people of our nation out of their pockets, out of their lives, the funds they need to live in dignity, to enhance the wealth of the wealthiest of this nation in perpetuity. In perpetuity. These folks will never, ever live to see their children, their great-grandchildren, or their great-great-grandchildren ever want. Yet they would take from the mouths of those who are struggling to keep a roof over their heads, to educate their children, to get quality health care, to live in dignity. That's what this bill is about. It's morality, folks. Let's not get caught up in all of the whereas's, because they know that by confusing everyone, they can basically disenfranchise us they can make us say, oh, well, we can never win. They can demoralize us, but this is not the time for that. This will resound for generations to come if we don't stand up, we don't speak out, we don't push back, we don't resist right now. So City, what it would do to devastate New York State, what it would do to devastate working people across this nation. There has been nothing proposed by this Congress that has not had a bullseye on the hearts of the American people, all at the expense of keeping wealthy people wealthy in perpetuity. What you need to know is that part of this scam is to make you believe that you will be getting some sort of tax relief. What you won't hear that what they give you right now is simply temporary. What it is baked into the bill. And when our tax bill sunsets for the working class people of this nation, they will have embedded the permanent, the permanent tax cuts that will benefit the wealthy for generations to come. We can't allow that to happen, can we? Hakeem Jeff. The Republican tax scam 
will not help the middle class, it will hurt the middle class. It will raise taxes on working families and middle class Americans. It will undermine Medicare and it will explode the deficit. And this is all being done in order to cut taxes for the wealthy and for the well-off. The Republican tax plan will force our children and grandchildren to shoulder more than a trillion dollars in additional debt simply to get tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires and special interest corporations who don't need it and who don't deserve it. In fact, Donald Trump doesn't deserve a tax cut. Betsy DeVos doesn't deserve a tax cut. The Koch brothers don't deserve a tax cut. Working families and middle class Americans are the ones who deserve a tax cut. Until it's dead and buried, I'm Hakeem Jeffries. I approve this message. 